Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Hi, and welcome to Postscript. I'm Lou Ann Riley, Grow Group and Discipleship Director here at FaithBridge, and I'm here with founding pastor Ken Werline, who just talked about the second part of this revival that's been going on in your life. Welcome, Pastor Ken. Thank you. Uh, so last week we talked about the first thing, which was mm -hmm. your reawakening the and, joy yes, of your salvation. Uh, and storing this uh, joy of your salvation. And this week we talked about this recharging that yeah. you've had yeah. from the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Um, and we talked about three uh, sort of touches categories. or categories categories mm -hmm. of the Holy Spirit. We talked about first the initial one mm -hmm. when you're saved, mm -hmm. um, the second one which is your ongoing sanctification mm -hmm. and surrender, mm -hmm. um, and then you mentioned the third one. And as you talked about the third one, uh, the kind of the special touch of the Holy Spirit, you mentioned that this category can be maybe the most confusing. Um, and so yeah. can you talk to us a little yeah, bit more yeah. about that category? Yeah. Um, entire churches and denominations are founded uh, sometimes by precisely what they have decided on this third category, this, these special fillings of the Holy Spirit. For example, <clears throat> um, a little more than 100 years ago, in the early 1900s, um, out at Azusa Street, you had a group of Christians who the Holy Spirit just moved in on and um, it was unmistakable, and the recurring thing that seemed to be happening with many of them is that they were speaking in tongues. Hmm. And it was out of this that the modern uh, charismatic or Pentecostal movement, um, I'll just lump those in together, um, sort of got going along. Now, what happened is that then people, um, in successive years, decades go by, and maybe the Holy Spirit isn't touching quite so palpably, mm -hmm. but they're still saying, this is the mark that we're looking for. Have you spoken in tongues? Nope, okay, then, then you haven't got it yet. Um, well, I think we have to be careful about being prescriptive rather than descriptive about here's what happened in this situation. You go over, there's another group of Christians that came along and ultimately find their way upstream to one of my heroes, John Wesley. This is the Wesley and Holiness um, Christians. And they look at uh, what happened with John Wesley and mm -hmm. he had this, this moment that he referred to as when he was just so caught up in the touch and the unction, the power of the Holy Spirit, that it was as if he just couldn't even sin. Mm. It just, it just couldn't even sin. He just, just, the love of God was shed abroad in his heart. He just, he had perfect love. Well, doctrines out of that formed the doctrine of perfection. Okay. Like I could be perfect. Yes. You, you probably can't sustain it, but in those moments you can be caught up and you can be perfect in love and in fullness of the Holy Spirit. And those Christians began to refer to uh, the experience as, and it, it, sort of their trigger phrase was, have you been sanctified? Hmm. Whereas a lot of Christians are like, well, I thought that's kind of a oh, gradual thing that you're thing. ongoing yeah. sanctified. No, have you been sanctified? Oh, I see. Your pneumatology, the study of the spirit, um, is such that you're convinced that when the unction of the Holy Spirit has come on you in this third category that we're talking about, that's gonna be the same. Okay. You have yet another group of Christians that came along, we'll call these the cessationists. And these were the people who got nervous about <laughs> these kind of people that I was just describing. And they said, that feels really woo woo to us. And so we're gonna just say, you know what? The only thing the Holy Spirit does is he comes in you when you get saved and that's the end. And everything else ceased when the earliest Christians died off. And so you don't see that stuff anymore. And there, it's nice and, and tidy. Well, for uh, obvious reasons to me, I look at all of these and I say, huh, 
You know, I can understand how each of you got there, but I wouldn't sign up for any of you um, 100% mm-hmm. um, because I think you built your foundation on a portion, a slice. A slice. You Rather don't have the whole pie. Big picture. And I think we have to, to pull the camera back and realize that there might be a little bit more that's going on. And, and that's why when I was talking about the third, this third category, this third touch, I was careful not to get too prescriptive. Mm-hmm. It, I mean, I guess if I were to say, well, you know what, I'll start a, a, a movement myself. The way that you get touched by the Holy Spirit is you go to breakfast with an old friend that you had some hurt feelings with and you make amends and maybe tears will come right there in the restaurant. You'll cover your face with the napkin so the waitress isn't thinking, what is going on? That's really weird. And then you'll get on an airplane and you'll go see your friend Ben and he'll tell you this story that all of a sudden will trigger something. And then this will, well, that was my experience. Mm -hmm. But I can't be prescriptive Mm -hmm. and say that therefore- That's the experience for every That's how you get touched by the Holy Spirit in in a, special sort of way. Right. And so I think this sort of explanation of point three and foundation will help with explaining some of the questions that I came in. I bet so, because they'll probably plug There's in. a lot of questions Good. about it. Um, uh, a question that came in in a couple different ways uh, was around this question of once saved, always saved. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is when you're talking about that, you were talking about that initial touch of the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. Uh, is Jesus is always there after the initial filling. Can we fall out of grace. Mm -hmm. Um, And another person may have asked it, can you lose your salvation Mm -hmm. through continuing sinning or converting to another religion Mm -hmm. or not repenting? Well, okay. So I think that that is, it's it's obviously a very interesting question. You have Christians who have come along um, uh, who have different conclusions on that looking at scripture. I would say You're always saved if you want to be saved. Now, the hypothetical question is where the the parsing out of the different theologies comes. If a person says, I don't want to be a Christian anymore. I gave that up 20 years ago. I became a Buddhist or I became a whatever and I don't want that. Will... God drag you to heaven and say, no, no, you come in here because you got Mm -hmm. saved. Well, I don't know of any Christian that would say yes. Now, what you'll have a differing opinion on is somebody will say, well, I guess he was, but now he's not because he said, I don't want that anymore. On the other hand, you'll have Christians who will say, he never really was. Mm -hmm. He just acted like he was Mm -hmm. because he couldn't be where he is now if he really had been. Well, how do we know that? We, yeah, the, can't know that but you end up really at the same place gotcha. either way. Mm-hmm. Um, as long as you want to be with Jesus, he wants to be with you. And um, so. That's good. Yeah. Uh, another question came around, around about the uh, gifts of the Holy Spirit in today's world, particularly around spiritual healing. Sure. Um, you see a lot of that in the Bible. Sure. And is that perpetual and is it ongoing? Today? Is it happening yeah. today? It's funny. funny. I was uh, talking about that even with one of our interns over the weekend who uh, we were talking about how sometimes you go to a place that's known for the healings that they're doing. And um, he was saying something to the effect of, you know, I've, I've really experienced God there, but sometimes I leave a little bit confused and I'm really wondering. Is that real or is that, you know, was that legitimate? And the answer is, I don't know the answer because I don't, I've been to that place and I told him, I don't know that person who's the preacher and and I can't really say. But I do know this from my experience. If it really is genuine, typically the next morning when you wake up and you're thinking about that, you're not going that was not real. You just continue to have this sense of, that was the most amazing thing that God just did. I know that I know that I know God was in that place. Now, I do think sometimes, back to the categories that we were talking about, if the Lord showed up in a, in a ministry or in a church 
and he did some healings because I do believe he still does. I am not a cessationist. I do believe the Holy Spirit is still alive and well and working today, just as in scripture. I do think though that some Christians come along and pastors and churches and for whatever reason, God's uh, hand of anointing and blessing and favor is upon them and, and some, they pray for healing and people get healed. So they do it again the next week and people get healed. And they do it the next week and people get healed. And they're like, I guess I'm just a healer. And, but, but I think here again, we have to be very careful. We can't presume upon the Holy Spirit. Um, and I think this is where sometimes churches and movements and whole denominations maybe have gotten a little bit confusing because the unction moved on to do something else or wanted to, but they kept doing the same thing that they'd always been doing. Mm -hmm. And so 20 years later, they're still saying, and if you'll come forward and you'll do it and this, you'll have this experience. And people are like, okay, so like this, and th is it working? You know, and but well here at this point, you, you're, you've gotten enamored by the function or, or rather by the form, by the forms of mm -hmm. what was happening but we can't put the Holy Spirit in a bottle and just right. keep uncorking him on demand mm -hmm. and just saying, this is how it always happens. Mm -hmm. So that would be the answer. Um, uh, does he still heal? Absolutely, he still does. Do I have a formula or an address that you can go to and this is where it's, no, I don't. But sometimes he does have a place and he just, sometimes he's done it here. Mm -hmm. and, um, and it's glorious when he does. Good. Um, another question that came in, and there was a couple different versions of this question too. Um, I've heard it said by some that only those who speak in tongue, uh, which they call the evidence of the Spirit, is can truly have the Holy Spirit. Right, right. Uh, is, is that how we know that we have the right, Spirit? Right, right. Well, yeah. And no. The answer, I believe, is no. And that goes back to what I was explaining a few minutes ago. I do believe that the gift of tongues uh, is still a very active spiritual gift. And uh, don't discount that in the slightest. I do not believe that if a person hasn't had or utilized that gift, that they have not been filled with the Holy Spirit. Um, any more than I do not believe that if a person hasn't preached the sermon, they haven't been filled with the Holy Spirit because that's my gift. And you know, I could easily say, hey, you haven't been filled with the Holy Spirit, you haven't preached. Um, this is what happened to Peter, right? Mm -hmm. He preached, I preached, that's the sign. No, I can't do that. Um, so I, I think we have to be careful not to uh, box in and say, this must this be your the experience. One thing, yeah. mm -hmm. But if you've had that experience and that's, um, going on in your life spiritually? Well, praise the Lord. Wonderful. Awesome. Okay, so uh, when we talk about the Holy Spirit, we uh, can't help but talk about the Trinity. So there yes. are questions that came around Father, that, Son, talking about the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Those are the three ways that God shows himself mm -hmm. to us. Does this mean that they're all the same person, but manifesting himself in different ways mm -hmm. and roles throughout history? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's precisely what it means. Uh, uh, you go th back to the very beginning of the Bible, and um, this is where we see God the Father at work doing this creating. Jesus himself would refer to him as Father, Abba, Father. Um, but interestingly, right back there at the very beginning in Genesis, it talks about how um, he created the light and the world and the water and everything out of nothing. And, but before any of it started, uh, when it was null and void and formless, the spirit of the Lord hovered. So the Holy Spirit is, is uh, right in there, even though he's not going to be uh, accentuated until you get to the New Testament. Mm -hmm. Even in the Old Testament, you do have points where the Holy Spirit is gonna show up he comes upon Elijah that day when he was up on Mount Carmel and the people who were worshiping the idols of Baal um, and doing all the sacrificing and, and trying to call down fire from heaven. And the Holy Spirit just comes upon Elijah and 
wow, you know, what happens? And so you have these scenes in the Old Testament where the Holy Spirit would just come, but you don't have this uh, th thorough outpouring of the Holy Spirit that you get in the New Testament mm -hmm. after Acts. After mm -hmm. Jesus leaves, he says, it's good for me to go because then I can send mm -hmm. my Holy Spirit. And the great thing about that is then I can be everywhere mm -hmm. and in all of you um, at the same time. Okay, so my follow-up question is about what you just talked about mm -hmm. right there, about the Jesus, Jesus going so the Holy Spirit can mm -hmm. come. And this question says that in the discipleship group recently, if the Father is not the Son and the Son is not the Spirit and the Spirit is not the Father, but all three are the triune God, then why could Jesus not stay with the Holy Spirit? Text says that he had to leave for the Spirit to come. Is there a better understanding of this? Yeah, I kind of understand the question. Why I, can't Jesus and the Spirit be here at the same time? I think is, why right. did he have to go well, for let's, the okay, Spirit? Okay, let's go back to the original. There's, there's a little problem in the premise of the question. Okay. If God is not the Father, if, God is, if the Father, Father is, is not the Son, Son and the Son is not the Spirit, well, they are. <laughs> they are the same. So, um, so let's let's get that established f first of all. I was telling the people in my small group we were perplexed about the the Trinity the other night, and so I used a very pedestrian illustration that I had heard when I was a kid that seemed to make sense to me, and that being uh, the picture of a cherry pie, but the cherry pie has to be one of the really good kind of cherry pies that has the really gooey kind of filling that flows or not the coagulated lumpy kind of filling. And I remember the speaker saying, suppose you took a knife and you cut into the crust all the way down to the bottom, um, three clear marks in that cherry pie, three big pieces. Now, if it's the good kind of filling, you have to have a spatula and you gotta flip it out because all the cherry filling is gonna ooze mm -hmm. out of the sides. And he said, now, if you could get down underneath the crust before it was cut, and even after it's cut, that, that filling is still flowing um, together. Well, in a very simplistic sort of way, this is how God is somehow. There's three clear manifestations that he uh, enabled us to see him in and as and does still, but he's one uh, God. Now, why he manifests, when he manifests, the way that he manifests, I think we'll have to ask him uh, mm -hmm. that in the end, because I can't say, well, here's why he had to do, well, I guess in his own plan is this was what had to happen. It's good. <laughs> it's good. Uh, I think this message um, was really good in that it cleared up a lot of questions, I think, that people have about the Holy Spirit That's and, and how you're filled with it. So good. thank you for that and uh, excited that you got to share more of your story mm -hmm. and what God's doing here mm -hmm. um, and excited to see what the Holy Spirit does uh, in, in the, the lives ahead. of people in the days ahead. Amen. So thank you for that. And Thanks. thank you for joining us here for Postscript. We'll see you back here next week. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org slash postscript.